Changes are underway tonight in the San Marco neighborhood that's been years in the making. Speed limits are being reduced and the change comes just days after a similar situation involving a 13 year old girl who was struck by a hit and run driver in Julington Creek. She only suffered a minor concussion and some bruises. Well, tonight that teen is back home and First Coast News reporter Nick Perot joins us from the San Marco neighborhood. In case you're wondering, how can you make a change in your neighborhood if you're having issues like this? So what are they saying tonight about seeing the signs? Anthony, well, right now I can show you this is the first sign that has actually been put up here in this neighborhood just a short while ago today that said 30 miles an hour, now 20 miles an hour. This is something that was a community effort. It wasn't something that happened overnight, and it's something this neighborhood hopes will encourage others to go out there and do the same to reduce speed limits in their neighborhood. Just on London Road, we have 13 children. And we have bikers, we have strollers, we have skateboarders. How old is he now? Uh, he's eight and a half months. Okay. For those that live in this Colonial Manor neighborhood. I think five years is longer than any of us anticipated when we started this effort, certainly. By Friday. John Baxter and his community expect to look up and finally see these signs say 20 miles per hour. A change that does not happen overnight. A lot of neighbors filed complaints with the city as well as JSO about speeding motorists. Baxter says even chains of emails and neighbor complaints to the city and sheriff's office over several years are not enough alone. You have to go door to door. Step by step, Baxter and his fellow neighbors did just that, saying persistence is the key to change. The volunteers that went around uh, to get signatures sometimes had to knock on doors six and eight times just to get people to answer their door because they thought we were selling something. Ultimately, they were safety. Nearly 400 people tired of seeing so many use London Street as a speeding shortcut signed on. Roughly 85% of the neighborhood collecting half the city cost they needed to, roughly $1,400 to put the signs in. We realize this might not get every motorist to slow down, but if we can just get one person to slow down and go a more reasonable residential speed, then hopefully one child's life will be saved. Much anticipated stakes stand nearby, marking off where the new signs will take their place. We look forward to this long journey coming to an end. In hopes of reminding people to take it slow on the way to their destination. And back out here live, we can tell you this is again a process that started with this neighborhood going to JSO and going to the area to address the speed and the issue. Now we do want to tell you this ordinance actually came started back in 2014 to get neighbors to come and to even be able to present an argument to the city. So that was something that had to change on its own end. So this neighborhood says they hope that by starting this and getting this first 20 mile an hour sign put up, that it'll be easier for other neighborhoods. They have to collect a certain amount of signatures. This neighborhood obviously did that. It's over 70% have to sign on. They had 85% and they have to be able to make up half of what it would cost to put in these new signs. Reporting live tonight, Nick Perot, First Coast News on your side.